Wrath of the Lich King may have been the first time that Blizzard ever added a hero class to the game in the Death Knight. Yet below the surface, another class, one that had existed since day one of vanilla, was to prove the real hero of this expansion. You know how in the Burning Crusade, it's an expansion about fighting an endless army of demons, and guess what, the class that can control demons, Warlock, ends up being really good. So what if we had an expansion where we're fighting an endlessly growing army of undead? If only we had someone whose main class fantasy was turning them into piles of ash. Well, we do as it turns out. And they're good at it. Really good at it. In fact, they are either amazing or literally the best at the majority of the roles they can do. Though things are going to be different since we're playing on the final patch, you should still expect a huge surge in popularity for the Paladin class. With three specs to cover and a huge volume of changes, let's make a start on checking out how the Paladin evolves in Wrath of the Lich King. But before we talk more about Azeroth, I want to introduce you to another virtual world, Core. Core is a brand new gaming metaverse platform available on the Epic Games Store that's free to download, play, and perhaps most interestingly, make your own creations on. You remember playing Flash games on those questionable browsers years and years ago? Core is like the grown-up version of that. It's not just one game, but a hub into over 50,000 worlds from platforming, PvP shooters, building, survival, and, well, just about anything, really. And you can create and customise the avatar that you want for this world with hundreds of different hairstyles, accessories, outfits, and more. One of the games I want to highlight today is Primal World, an expansive and visually impressive open-world RPG. Explore a huge world without limits, fight against ancients, get involved with puzzles, complete quests, all that RPG good stuff. Primal World feels like it's taking a step towards the simpler day of the RPG where less is on the set path and it's more of a go and see what's out there attitude. There's set content if you want to do that but Primal World doesn't stop you from going and seeing what's over the next mountain or even getting up there with your jetpack. Gather, craft, hone your gear and then party up to take on world bosses or take a more relaxed exploration route through the game alongside a variety of different companion followers. If you want to check out Core or Primal World both are totally free to download and play using the links on either the the description or the pinned comment. It also helps the channel out too, so if you want to give it a look, I would appreciate that. A big thanks to Core for the sponsor. Let's talk WoW. Let's start off with the general gameplay changes. So the whole seal and judgment system gets a revamp. Your seal used to be a short duration buff that modified your auto attacks in some way, and your judgment was just a single spell that would unleash that seal, consuming the buff for a variety of different effects. Now instead, seals and judgments work as two separate entities. Seals have had their duration moved up to 30 minutes, and judging will no longer consume the active seal. Seals, for the most part, still do the exact same thing, Wisdom restores mana on hit, Justice has a chance to stun, and so on. However, the Judgment spell has been split up into three separate new spells. You have Judgment of Light, which places a debuff when you or others hit a target, you heal. Wisdom, the same, but for restoring mana. And Justice, so the target can't exceed the normal movement speed. So, say for example, you have Seal of Light active, meaning your attacks will restore health to you, and you use Judgment of Wisdom on a target, meaning all attackers against that target have a chance to restore mana. Or you have Seal of Vengeance active, so you're applying a damage over time effect, and you judge justice, meaning the target cannot exceed normal movement speed. You can refer to each seal's tooltip for any bonuses their respective judgments will do, but the vast majority are just do a bit more holy damage. So all in all, no more spamming to reapply seals all the time, and make sure you're using the correct judgment for the correct occasion. Next, and possibly the best quality of life feature this expansion for paladins, certain spells will change from being blessings to hands. This includes spells such as salvation, protection, and sacrifice. More on their new effects later. This makes it so, for example, your mage in your raid decides they're going to try really hard to rip threat on an AoE pull, and you go to use blessing of protection on them. You no longer have to reapply whatever blessing you had on them afterwards, as hands on blessings are different spells. In fact, we shouldn't really call it bop anymore, it should be hop, as it's now hand of protection. Also very good in PvP, obviously, we are spamming blessings a lot more. Final general change is that your charger is now learned at your class trainer for a few gold instead of having to go and do that massive quest line. Over in the Holy Tree there are a couple of noteworthy changes. Exorcism and Holy Wrath have had a bit of a switch up. Now Exorcism has a cast time, can be used against any target, and will always crit versus undead or demons. And Holy Wrath is now instant
instant cast, it still only affects undead or demons, but will additionally stun them for 3 seconds. Lay on hands now causes forbearance, however it has the same effects as previously. Forbearance itself is now 2 minute duration up from 1, and Avenging Wrath cannot be used within 30 seconds of benefiting from something else that caused forbearance. Divine Play is a new spell for Holy, gain 25% of your mana over 15 seconds, and it reduces your outgoing heals by 50%. This, in addition to a bunch of other effects, is why Paladins really never go oom as any of the three specializations anymore. A lot more to say about this spell later on though. Sacred Shield is another new spell for Holy, applying a buff that lasts 30 seconds. When that target takes damage every 6 seconds, they gain a shield, which absorbs some damage and makes it so Flash of Light has a 50% increased crit chance. Sounds like a pretty small ability, but this is actually insanely good for all areas of content. Again, much more to say about this later. For Protection, Blessing of Kings has been removed from talents and is now a baseline spell instead. Hammer of Justice also acts like an interrupt if a target is immune to stuns. And of Sacrifice gets mega buffed and it's now turned into a 2 minute cooldown spell, redirecting 30% of damage taken to the Paladin up to a maximum of 100% of the caster's health. Hand of Salvation gets totally reworked, it's no longer this regular 30% threat reduction blessing you just have active at all times, now instead it reduces 20% of the target's total threat over 10 seconds. Divine Protection is also reworked, it used to be like a weaker version of Divine Shield that you got at low levels, now instead it's a 50% damage reduction that lasts 12 seconds on a 3 minute cooldown. New to Protection is Hand of Reckoning, this is your single target taunt and if you're already being attacked it does some holy damage. Important threat generation tool and a controllable taunt for protection palette is super useful. Finally, Shield of Righteousness. Hey, it's Shield Slam, but it does holy damage instead. Big threat generator, a new button to press, scales with block value, another important addition for prop alleys. For Retribution, the main changes were to Judgments, which we've already gone over a little bit ago. Apart from that, Hammer of Wrath is now an instant cast spell, so it's finally useful in PvE. The cast time in the past hurt it so badly, resetting your melee swing for a low damage, high mana cost ability was just barely ever worth doing. Now this becomes a strong part of the Paladin's execute rotation. Apart from that, Seal of Vengeance becomes the go-to DPS seal for single target encounters. It now applies a stacking dot on the target, and when at maximum stacks, your attacks deal bonus holy damage. Also, your judgment scales in damage with the number of stacks the target has. The seal twisting gameplay from TBC is no longer possible in Wrath, so if you weren't a fan of that, then good news here. That is our baseline changes done then, so how about we get onto Paladins in Raiding? There is just so much to be said about them here, let's make a start with Holy, as it goes from being probably the least represented healer in TBC to pretty much the best in Wrath. Talents wise, Illumination actually gets nerfed again from TBC to Wrath, going from a 60% mana refund on spell crit to 30%. This used to be 100% back in vanilla by the way, it was insane. Despite this, well, mana isn't exactly much of a concern for the Holy Paladin, don't worry about this nerf. Aura Mastery gets reworked into a cooldown, either doubling the effect of any aura, or or making allies immune to interrupts or silences for its duration. Blessed Hands is also new, increasing the utility on Sacrifice and Salvation, though not really needed so much in PvE content. Holy Shot goes down to only a 6 second cooldown, another huge cooldown reduction for this spell since TBC, and makes it so much better and a more consistent part of the Paladin's healing toolkit. Judgments of the Pure gives you more damage on seals and judgments, and also a huge 15% on both melee and casting speed for 1 minute it after you land one. Make sure this is active at all times of course. Enlightened Judgment makes it so you don't have to be sitting in melee distance to refresh your judgment which is a nice quality of life change and gives a bit of spell hit too so those annoying resists are less likely. Infusion of Light is a new talent that really powers up Holy's healing. After a Holy Shot crits your next flash of light will be instant and apply a powerful heal over time to targets with Sacred Shield and Holy Light gains extra crit chance. Your final talent is why Holy just cannot be matched for incredible single target heals. It's Beacon of Light. Makes it so you copy all of your heals to a friendly target for a 1 minute duration and it has no cooldown. Whether you're focusing on the raid, topping players off or just whatever it may be, you are always providing a ton of heals for this target. Holy Paladins use glyphs such as Beacon for more uptime and just having to recast it less, Wisdom for more mana efficiency and Holy Light to give them a bit of AoE healing. And this glyph will add up surprisingly on heals. So that's a roundup of holy changes, what is new for prot? Also a ton of stuff. 
Divine Sacrifice is a brand new 2 minute cooldown, which basically functions as Hand of Sacrifice, but AoE. More importantly though is the talent it unlocks, Divine Guardian, a 20% damage reduction on your entire raid for 6 seconds. This is one of the reasons that protection is just above other tanks. It's got an external raid wide damage reduction cooldown. Not only can no other tank do this, no other class in the game can do this. Improved Devotion Aura is now also very powerful. The bonus armor is nice, but 6% bonus heals on, well, your entire raid, essentially. Hey, that's pretty good. Blessing of Sanctuary also gets buffed considerably. It used to just block a flat amount of damage and reflect some damage when you block an attack. Now it reduces all damage taken by 3%, gives 10% stamina and strength, and when you mitigate an attack, you gain mana. Yep, this spec seems about fine so far. You know what else this tanking spec needs? Cheat to death because that's what Ardent Defender is. On top of passively taking less damage at low health, any attack that would kill you instead sets you to 30% of your health based upon your defense. On a two minute cooldown, you can literally die every two minutes and just not die on a tank. I've no idea how this made it to live servers. On top of that, Avenger's Shield has its cast time removed. Super happy about that. Not being able to use it when actively tanking kinda sucked. Touch by the Light gives you spell damage scaling off your strength. This is why prop palace don't have spell power on their gear anymore this talent just does it for you guarded by the light reduces spell damage taken and makes divine plea a permanent buff so you never go oom um ever also the spiritual attunement just above it in the tree too this used to be a passive for mana gains now you can just put a point in it here instead shield of the templar reduces damage taken even more and adds a three second silence to avenger's shield so you can easily pull in those pesky casters judgments of the just is not taken here it depends if you need the melee attack speed reduction death knights usually usually have this debuff covered and they can also spread it via AoE, whereas Paladins can't. Finally at the bottom of the tree is Hammer of the Righteous, a short cooldown cleaving attack which to me always sounded sort of like a cow and now you can never unhear it either. Either way, it's just another button to press, helps on AoE threat, does good damage, all positives here. Protection uses glyphs such as Righteous Defense so that the taunts actually work, Divine Plea for some passive damage reduction, and Vengeance for Expertise gains, which translates to threat gains. The final Paladin spec, and the one which I have a feeling is going to be the most anticipated, is Retribution. And just like the other two specs, a huge amount of positives to talk about here. Deal of Command is now a passive cleave for all of your abilities in instead of an RNG proc for extra damage. You want this up and running whenever facing multiple mobs. Sanctity of Battle is new and just adds some more damage to your core rotation. Sanctity Aura has gone, instead now allies affected by any of your auras gain 3% bonus damage. Art of War is new as well, increasing damage from your abilities and making it so melee crits make your next flash of light or exorcism instant cast. Huge bit of utility here for both PvE and PvP. Judgments of the Wise make it so that you basically don't go oom anymore when playing the game, which is great. Sanctified Wrath is another massive talent, making Hammer of Wrath crit very reliably, shaving Avenging Wrath down to a 2 minute cooldown, and bypassing 50% of damage reduction effects whilst it's active. Swift Retribution adds 3% physical haste to your raid, simple enough. Chief of Light powers up your utility a bit, adding more power to your heals that you'll be proccing constantly off Art of War. Righteous Vengeance is a simple damage over time effect when your abilities crit, and finally at the bottom of the tree is some good AOE for Retribution Paladin. No longer is it just pressing Consecration, going oom and then being sad. Divine Storm hits up to four nearby enemies hard and also heals for a bit too because hey why not. It's also a really satisfying ability to fire off into a pack of mobs and see the numbers just fly up on your screen. Retribution power up further with glyphs such as Vengeance for the bonus expertise, Judgment for some more damage and Exorcism for the same reason. Also small side note glyph of Sense Undead as a minor glyph gives you 1% more damage against undead when it's active so be sure to have that on when you're in Nax or ICC. So that's the talent and baseline changes rounded out for the Paladin. How well do we expect them to perform throughout Wrath the Lich King in raiding content then? Um, yeah, so when I said they're the real hero class, I kind of mean it. Protection is the best tank, and there's not much of an argument to be had with it. Their single target threat is great, their AoE is good, they have no mana problems, they have amazing utility, they have an external raid-wide damage reduction, they have cheat death for some reason, they scale well. Your main tank is probably going to be a protection paladin. You could have an off-tank protection paladin as well if you really wanted to. They are honestly that good. Expect a huge amount of people to consider rolling 
during Prop Palathor Wrath. There is also a very strong case for Holy Paladin being the best healer as well in the expansion. The throughput is insane on every single fight, they just don't go oom, they have that standard great paladin utility, and best of all in TBC Holy Paladin is not at all a highly contested healer spot. Though I feel if you played Holy Paladin in TBC it's kind of like you've done your time and now you get your raid spot in Wrath. And in Wrath many raids will consider bringing up to two Holy Paladins. In fact they are the healer which is most likely to be stacked in the expansion. For Retribution things are a bit different, they're not on that same power level that Prot and Holy is. I think a lot of people are remembering Launch Ret which was close to Launch DK which means they were insanely overpowered. On final patch they're a lot more toned down. I expect them to be mid to high on DPS meters and you shouldn't really expect to be topping anything until ICC as you really really need your tier 10 2 set which gives your Divine Storm a 40% chance to reset its cooldown on melee swing. Until then it's going to be a little bit tougher to do. Also playstyle wise you should be able to macro your entire rotation into a single button because Ret is just sort of press the thing that lights up playstyle. Still having somebody who's on the ball with the utility blessings is much better than a one button presser any day of the week but I just thought I'd give it a mention. Overall though Paladins are an excellent choice if you want to get into any of Wrath of the Lich King's PvE content as any spec. So that is the PvE side of things out of the way and it's looking pretty amazing for the Paladin. Can we expect just as many great things out of PvP? Yes, yes we can. So if you played TBC as a PvPer, your experience of facing Paladins in the arena is going to be pretty limited. Retribution has a couple of viable comps where they aim to global people and Holy is rarely played due to its general lack of utility and just being too easy to lock down. This is all going to change massively in Wrath. In addition to arguably being the best PvE healer, Holy Paladins are pretty much the best PvP healers as well. Their toolkit simply gets insanely good. Here's an example specialization, not a huge amount of new things compared to say to the PvE spec. Notable talents taken are unyielding faith, reducing the duration of fears and disorients by 30%. Improved concentration aura reduces the effects of silences or interrupts a bunch more. Less life is somewhat of an optional choice, it's RNG heavy but it can certainly save you at times if you're being focused constantly as a holy paladin. And finally not to forget sacred cleansing. Ah, Sacred Cleansing. So in Wrath PvP, they took so much of the frustrating RNG out of Arena, such as making stun resist effects becoming stun duration reduction effects instead, and then they go and introduce this highly questionable talent. Trust me, if you are a caster, you are not going to like Holy Paladins solely because of this talent. It gives your cleanse a 30% chance to increase the target's resistance to all of poison, magic, and disease effects by 30% for 10 seconds. So say a Paladin dispels a random debuff off of their warrior, your frost nova or death coil or entangling roots or just anything to be honest has a considerably higher chance to be resisted. Over in the protection tree, it's mainly things we've already talked about for PvE, but improved Hammer of Justice is also taken for some more CC. Overall, Holy Paladin's toolkit is just wildly out of control for Arena. They're super hard to CC, having Hand of Sacrifice and Divine Sacrifice, a much stronger on-the-move instant cast toolkit with a shorter cooldown on Holy Shock, infusion of light for instant casts and sacred shield. They can immune all sciences and interrupts with aura mastery. They suffer zero spell knockback on heals thanks to their talents. They're crazy manner efficient as per usual with illumination and sacred beacon sacred cleansing is a big middle finger to casters and holy paladins even help burst a lot harder with judgments of the pure and an instant cast hammer of wrath holy paladin should be the healer you see the most overall in wrath arena glyph wise they consider salvation for another personal cooldown holy shock to reduce its cooldown a little bit more and light for some extra heals holy pallies will be seen across a huge range of comps most notably with thunder cleave which is arms Ellie Holy or the infamous TSG which is arms and Holy Holy Pala. Retribution also has quite a few changes and should be seen a bunch more than it currently is in TBC. Talent wise additions are Vindication that now reduces the target's attack power. It does scales and the talents are just showing the value at a low level but it's a decent amount at 80. Pursuit of Justice has
has a disarm reduction effect added onto it, a nice pickup for a talent which you're already taking for the movement speed increase. Divine Purpose gets changed too, now reducing the chance for spells and ranged attacks to hit you by 4%, as well as making your Hand of Freedom remove stuns from the target, making it into an even more powerful bit of utility. Don't forget Sanctified Wrath also makes you bypass 50% of damage reduction effects whilst Avenging Wrath is up. For Retribution in PvP, the big change is really in the playstyle. You don't have to play around mana as much anymore, and your whole kit isn't building up to Reckoning and Wind Fury stacking somebody out. Retribution's pressure is a lot more consistent, whilst also fitting that great utility niche that Paladins just always have. Just don't expect it to be like Wrath Launch Brett was, where you sort of dragged your face along the keyboard and just gained rating. But wait, there is another PvP spec that isn't Holy or Ret, and no it's not Prot. I don't think we're going to see Deep Prot in Arena all that much, even though it does have quite a bit going for it, such as silencing on Avenger's shield, but the spec I want to talk about is Preg Pala. Named after the player who popularised it, the Preg Pala is a mix between Prot and Ret, and you deal damage with a one-hander and a shield, not a two-hander. Your main sources of damage coming from Shield of the Righteous, as well as Seals and Judgments. Here are our talents. Going down to Sheaf of Light and getting Art of War in the Retribution Tree is absolutely vital. This makes it so your off heals are incredibly consistent, as every single melee crit will proc an instant flash of light or an exorcism as well. You have a good amount of CC with Hammer of Justice and Repentance. In the Protection Tree, mostly standard PvP talents taken here, but we also want to go down and get Reckoning. This spec is all about the extra seal damage as well as more chances to proc Art of War, again making those flash of lights instant. Finally, one-handed weapon specialization is just a flat 10% damage. And despite this spec wearing a one-hander and a shield, you'll be surprised by both the damage and healing that it is capable of doing, and it shuts down other melee classes hard by just being able to do more everything than they are able to. This spec does need a bit more gear to get going, particularly a fast one-handed spell power weapon is absolutely essential to making it work, so you may not see it all that much until later seasons. Either way, expect to face this monster of a hybrid in Wrath Arena. Preg Pala uses glyphs such as Judgment for more damage, Flash of Light where needed for more heals, and perhaps even Turn Evil versus Locks or DKs. You'll often find this alongside classes that can provide a Mortal Strike effect to capitalise on the pressure they generate. Let's round this out on some tier sets then. Tier 7, the Redemption Regalia. The 25-man recolor here is my go-to for Paladin Transmog to this day on retail and it looks amazing. Set-wise for Retribution, the 2 set is 10% more damage on Divine Storm and the 4 set 1 second less cooldown on Judgments. Both of these are solid damage increases, nothing really more to say. Protection has 10% more damage on Hammer of the Righteous, which is more threat, more AoE, very cool, and 3 seconds more on Divine Shield and Protection. Not sure how necessary defensive increases will be in Tier 7, but hey, Blizzard have said they're going to buff Nax Rammers, so time will tell. Holy's 2 set is 10% more crit on Holy Shock, which is very good, more heals in general, more chance to proc the likes of Illumination or Divine Infusion, and the 4 set reduces the cost of Holy Light by 5%, which if its cost matters at any point, it's more so early game, so not half bad. Tier 8, the Aegis Regal from Alduar. Let's just say looks wise nothing is going to beat the original Nax 25 recolor for me. The bonuses though are again very good. Ret's 2 set is 10% more damage on Exorcism and Hammer of Wrath and the 4 set 10% more crit chance on Divine Storm and Crusader Strike. All just good damage additions that certainly add up even if they're not terribly exciting. For protection you get more damage on various seals from the 2 set and a big block chance increase after Shield of the Righteous and for 6 second afterwards on the 4 set. This is going to have a pretty good uptime overall, definitely helping you in that main tank role. For the Holy, the 2 set gets a small heal over time when Holy shot crits. Would have been nicer if it contributed a bit more than 15%, but hey, it all adds up for Beacon. And the 4 set makes Sacred Shield proc a little bit more often, which will add up over the course of a fight, I guess. Tier 9, Terralian or Liadrin's Regalia from Trial of the Crusader. Retribution, 2 set, Righteous Vengeance can now crit. So this is the talent that places a dot on a target after you crit with one of your other abilities, which is a pretty nice increase actually. Foresight gives you 5% more crits from Judgments, which hey, that's something that procs Righteous Vengeance, that's pretty good. For Protection, the 2 set reduces the cooldown on Taunt a little bit and some extra damage on Hammer of the Righteous, and the 4 set reduces the duration of Forbearance a bit and the cooldown of Divine Protection. For Holy, the 2 set is 10% increased duration on Judgments, less refreshing them, generally a good thing, and the 4 set increases the effect of Flash of Light on targets with Sacred Shield by quite a bit. Tier 10, the Light Sworn Regalia from Ice Crown Citadel for Retribution, 
This is what you have been waiting for the entire expansion. The tier 10 2 set gives your melees a 40% chance to reset the cooldown on Divine Storm. This is probably the strongest tier set bonus in the entire game that has been made up until this point in time and will single-handedly catapult you up the DPS meters. You really need to get this as soon as you can. The 4 set on top of this increases damage on seals and judgments by a massive amount. Tier 10 is just a huge deal for Rhett. I would be looking forward to this. The Protection 2 set gets 20% more damage on Hammer of the Righteous and the 4 set 12% dodge for 10 seconds after activating Divine Play. And considering Divine Play itself is only on a 1 minute cooldown, that's pretty good. The Holy 2 set turns Divine Illumination from a really strong healing cooldown into an incredibly strong cooldown, adding a massive 35% bonus heals for its duration. And the 4 set makes your Holy Shock reduce the cast time of your next Holy Light by 0.3 seconds. Overall tier 10 for Paladins is really really strong. So now that we've covered PvP, PvE, tier sets and everything in between, can we give an answer to Paladin in Wrath of the Lich King Classic? How broken is it now? Um, yes. I think that's the correct answer here. Yes, they're really, really good. Best tank, check. Best PvP and PvE healer, check. Good DPS, becoming very good in tier 10, check. Stacked in raids, yep. Part of nearly all of Rafa Lich King's strongest arena comps, yep. This class, without a single doubt, is just overpowered this expansion, and you should be expecting a lot of people to roll it. The Paladin is just a great choice for Rafa the Lich King, whatever you are into. Out of every single class in the game moving from TBC to Wrath, I would say Paladin is the biggest winner and gets the most improvements by quite a long way. But those are my overall thoughts on the Paladin, so let me know whether you played it back in the day or whether you'll be playing it this time around. As always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you on the next one very soon. Another quick shout out to Core for the sponsor. Also, don't forget to check out Primal World. You can play the game by using the link in the description to download Core for free.